She's actually not made a hole, which is a good thing. Sorry about my really gross nose. I'm trying to grow them. Sorry. She's just ripped the fibres apart. You can, you can do this two ways. You can either get a piece of denim, another piece of denim, like I've got this piece here, which is just a pocket I took off some jeans. You can either use another piece of denim or you can use a piece of interfacing. It's either like a proper woven fabric or it's just like a mesh of fibres. Um, and on one side of it, there's a glue, lots of little tiny glue dots. And you iron it, the, iron, the heat of the iron melts the glue and it sticks to your fabric and like reinforces the fibres. So I could do either here because I don't need to worry about filling that hole, but it's an area where the denim is really thin um, and it's worn down a lot. I think it would benefit from another layer of something sturdy. Okay, so there's two things that really will make or break this. Number one is the thread colour is really important because if you, like you can see here on this one I did, is it gone? so like on this one I've done, where I haven't matched the thread doesn't look good. Where I have matched the thread, ace. The other thing that's really important is that you need to match the grain with your direction of stitching. So here, it's done well, even if I do say so myself, um, because the thread is going, so the, the denim is woven this way, going down the leg. My stitching lines match that exactly or pretty much exactly so they're going up and down like that here it's not done well not at all because i did a zigzag stitch don't do that so that just goes like all over the place really randomly so it's really obvious because you can see that the the grain of the denim is going up and down like this and i did zigzag stitches which are going like all over the place going like that so that's just not it just doesn't match at all so what you need to do is take some more jeans, turn them inside this. Welcome to my awful animation. I thought this might be easier than trying to explain it, but that was obviously before I had ever tried to do any animation. So the patch in that animation is maybe a little bit big. It only needs to be maybe two or three centimeters bigger than your rip all the way around, but make sure there is a little bit of extra fabric. Turn your jeans the right way around and just kind of smooth your rip completely flat. So it's almost as if it hadn't ripped in the first place. And if you get any of these like white threads that have come unwoven from the fabric, just tuck them underneath. And then using a really short stitch, you need to sew in lines that follow the grain line of your denim all along the rip. So my machine has a pre-programmed darning stitch. If yours has one, then use that. But if not, don't worry, you can do it manually. You just start with your needle as far over to the left as you can. And sew over the rip about one centimetre either side. Then lift your needle up and move it over one notch. There'll either be a dial on your machine or some, if they're computerised, might have a button. So just move your needle over one notch. Don't move your foot. And then, pressing your back stitch button, sew back to the start line in parallel to your first line of stitching. Then when you get back to the beginning, lift up your needle again, don't lift your foot, and move your needle over one notch. Sew forwards, move your needle over, 
Keep going until you reach the edge of your foot so your needle is now as far to the right as it can be. Move your needle back to the furthest left position and then continue like that. So the next step, once you've reinforced your hole with that initial stitching, is to make it invisible. So to do this, I used a free machine embroidery foot, which kind of sits over the fabric rather than pressing down on it. And it just means that you can move the fabric through the machine at the pace that you want. So you can play around with going faster, going slower, sewing quicker, but moving your fabrics slower. And it just means that you can get a more uneven stitch length, which is gonna help you to blend in the edges of that darning that we did. If you want you can use a blend of different threads. I used three different threads and I think ideally they would have been more blue. I had like that initial light blue colour and then I had like a mid grey and then a darker grey which was actually quite blue but I think it probably could have been a bit more indigo. But that's okay you still it still blends in really well so I mean try to match your threads as best as you can. Um, but if you're matching the grain and they're not too off, then you should be okay. So imagine that you've filled a hole in a wall and you need to paint over the filler. So you need to use a paint that matches the wall colour and like blend in the edges basically. The main thing is to match the fade of the denim. So you can see towards the centre back seam on the right hand side of the screen the denim is quite a lot darker and a lot more blue, so that's why I've just added in those darker colours there. And I think ideally they would be more blue, like maybe a bit more indigo, um, but that's all I had, so, you know, that'll have to do. And it actually worked pretty well. And that's the thing that's really going to make this look invisible, is if you match the fade of the denim really well. So this is the last bit of stitching that we have to do, and this is going to really blend it in so well. When I did it on my sisters, just completely made it. So I tried them on her before we did this step and actually the footage in the intro of this video is from before we did this final step and there was just something not right about them. And then I went back and looked and if you look at denim really closely, so get your jeans and look really closely at the fabric, there's actually a really kind of distinctive diagonal texture to it. On the surface of the denim, the indigo dye rubs off and that's where you get the fade of denim on like the bum and the knees and stuff. But in these tiny little ridges along the diagonal grain, the dye doesn't rub off. So to match that, just use a kind of mid-tone, I use like a mid-grey, and do exactly the same technique that we've done so far and just follow along that diagonal grain all along your rip to completely blend in your darning. We're nearly done. The final step now is to trim down your patch. Leave about two or three millimeters around your stitching on the inside of your jeans and then give it a good iron, lots of steam and press it nice and flat to set those stitches into the denim and then they're ready to wear. Okay, so these are the finished jeans. Show off your bum. It's the kind of thing where you can keep going all day, but I think it looks good. Are you happy? Very happy. Good. Okay. One pair of jeans. Done. <laughs> Thank you.